Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Two people kidnapped in Mexico are back on U.S. soil this morning. Two of their friends were killed in that attack. Coming up, what authorities are saying about why this happened? And let's take a look out there with live cam. Still kind of foggy this morning, a repeat of yesterday morning. And a good morning to you. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, March 8th, and I hardly saw any fog this morning, which was big compared to yesterday. Yeah, it's an improvement. I was just like in that shot, I just looked a little foggy still. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mike Coaster Hage is here to kick off our Wednesday morning. Good morning. Yeah, everybody's humid, but uh, if you look at some of the street lights, there's that little bit of fuzz mm -hmm. around them, but we don't have the fog like we had yesterday. Still be on the lookout for it, and you can see perfect example right here along 410. It looks a little bit uh, kind of kind of fuzzy around some of those lights. We do have good visibility in most places. Hints of it around Austin, New Braunfels, Fredericksburg, a little bit more down to the uh, the southeast. Temperatures are every bit as warmer, even warmer than what they were at this time yesterday, mid upper 60s, and we still have a ton of humidity out there. One thing helping us out, though, is there's still a fairly decent breeze as of right now, so that really prevents a lot of that thick fog from forming up. But with this wind coming in here out of the southeast, that's just pumping in all that moisture. So as that continues to pump on in here, a little bit of mist on the roads, as well as if the wind slackens, then we'll see some of those patches of fog here and there. So just be on the lookout for it. And oak is on the moderate side. Mold, hackberry, ash are all low. Throughout the rest of today, this morning, we are going to be Staying pretty steady. I mean, fluctuated degree or two here or there. Mist, some patchy fog, just be on the lookout for it. And then later on this afternoon, it's going to be another hot, humid day. Mid 80s, plenty of clouds around here. We're going to do the same thing starting off tomorrow. Then we have a front moving through tomorrow night. We've been talking about this one with a little bit of rain chances, but it also looks like it is going to pull in somewhat cooler air. So it may feel like March, believe it or not, for at least a short bit. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. After several years of financial hardship, along with declining student enrollment, a local school district is planning to consolidate at least five elementary schools. In a letter to parents, Harlandale ISD Superintendent Gerardo Soto said a final decision has not been made, but the school board will be voting on the proposal next month. That proposal suggests consolidation and repurposing the following elementary schools. This is Columbia Heights, Joel Weitzel Center, Moral Rayburn, and Vestal. Students at those schools would be transferred to other campuses if the proposal moves forward. We have that information posted right now on our website at KSET.com. This morning, Mexican authorities say they've made at least one arrest after four Americans were kidnapped in Mexico. Two of the victims are now back in the U.S. As ABC's Lindsay Watts reports, the two others were found dead. This morning, the two Americans who survived a kidnapping in Mexico are back in the U.S., arriving in a convoy of ambulances, SUVs, and military trucks. A three-day search for them ending at this shack outside of Matamoros, Mexico. Officials say it's where they found the two who were killed and two survivors. A mother of five, Latavia Tay McGee, was found alive, according to her mother. I had to hold my I was thinking the laws. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, there is a God. She says her daughter has no major injuries, telling us earlier that she had urged her not to travel to Mexico for cosmetic surgery. Also rescued, Eric James Williams. His wife says he was shot three times in the legs and is hospitalized in Texas. I just, I, I didn't even want to imagine what, what he was going through or, you know, what any of them were going through. The brutal kidnapping was caught on camera. The four traveled from South Carolina on Friday, and when they crossed into Matamoros, gunmen chased them, opening fire on their white minivan. The other two members of the group, Shahid Woodard and Zindel Brown, were killed during the attack. Mexican officials say this was a case of mistaken identity. A source close to the investigation tells ABC News that investigators believe the gunmen may have targeted the vehicle because they wrongly believed the group of Americans were rival human traffickers. We will continue to work closely with the Mexican government to ensure justice is done in this case. The city where this happened is right across the border from Brownsville, Texas, an area that's plagued by drug cartel violence. The State Department has issued its highest level do not travel warning for the region. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. 
TikTok may be coming to an end soon in the U.S. A bipartisan group of 12 senators have unveiled legislation that boosts President Joe Biden's ability to place a nationwide ban on the social media platform. The proposed law doesn't specifically name TikTok, but it would give the U.S. more power, like a ban, against foreign software that is deemed a national security risk by the Commerce Department. A TikTok spokeswoman says a possible U.S. ban would have, quote, considerable negative impact on the free speech rights of millions of Americans. TikTok's CEO is scheduled to testify at a House Energy and Commerce Committee later this month. In Ohio, the National Transportation Safety Board says it will now investigate Norfolk Southern. The railway has come under fire for a handful of incidents, including two train derailments in Ohio that happened just weeks apart. The NTSB says it will examine the company's safety culture. The agency says the railroad has five serious accidents since December of 2021 that resulted in three deaths. While the government investigation will take some time, the NTSB requested that Norfolk Southern take immediate action to review and assess its safety process. Practices. After signs of slowing down, the eruption of the summit of the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii is officially paused after 61 days of volcanic activity. U.S. Geological Survey says lava is no longer flowing on the crater floor where all recent activity has been confined. Kilauea started erupting on January 5th after a nearly month-long pause in volcanic activity. Time now, 436 and 68 degrees for now. Canned tuna could be a potential risk for many who eat it regularly. Just ahead, we'll show you how five of the most popular brands tested when it comes to high levels of mercury. Plus, meet one of the newest members of the San Antonio Spurs. That's coming up after the break. Let's check Trans Guide right now. And again, fog, really not much of an issue this morning at all. Things look pretty clear there. 37 and Loop 410, well-lit highways in that part of town. Let's look out there with live cam. Still humid though, and eh, maybe this lens needs to be clean, but a little foggy in this shot. 68 degrees, we'll be right back. Time for a look at sports. This past weekend, the Veterans Memorial Boys basketball team made school history by advancing to the UIL Class 5A state tournament. One year after coming up short in the regionals, the Patriots returned to Littleton Gym and defeated Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial 79-63. The Patriots boys basketball program established six years ago, and they've only finished with winning records in the past three seasons. This year's group is excited to get over the hump and earn their first state tournament berth. It feels good. It was a long journey. Uh, uh, I've said start of the season, I always wanted to play in the Alamo Dome, and now I'm finally doing it. It feels good. I think we just worked harder. We, we learned from last year, and we knew we were going to have to work harder because we lost seniors last year. We started the season one and three, and we, I think they said we won 34 of the last 35 games. So I think it's just like amazing to uh, become like, I don't know. Like, I think we overachieved, and I think we're going to continue to overachieve starting on Thursday. Guys are loud in that gym. Veterans Memorial will face top-ranked Dallas Kimball tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at the Alamo Dome. Hey, Brennan, to play Beaumont United in the Class 6A state semifinals. United won the 5A state championship last season, then moved up to 6A because of realignment. Brennan is 32-7, and seven, ranked 14th in the state. United is 35-1 and one and ranked number two in Texas. A year ago, Brennan lost the 6A regional, coming up one game short of state. This year, they beat San Marcos in the regional final to advance. We're one of the first teams that Brennan to go to state. Football hasn't gone yet. Soccer, we have great teams, but uh, just, just to be one of the first teams to go to state in this and this, at this school is a great thing. It's really exciting. Uh, you know, it's a first time experience for all of us. We're just going to have to play hard, play fast, and play aggressive, you know, play how we play. It's true confidence. There's nothing nothing fake or pretend about it. They're, they're ready to go. And, and they've had a lot of experiences in the game against some really quality players, and we're about to, about to play some more of those. So we're going to see what we can make happen with it. Brennan will play Beaumont United Friday night at 7 at the Dome. Two and a half weeks ago during the radio road trip, the Spurs claimed forward Julian Champagny off waivers on a two-way contract. Champagny wasn't selected in the 2022 draft and signed a two-way contract with the Sixers. Played two games in Philly before he was waived and spent most of his season in the G League. Champagny made his Spurs debut in the back-to-back -back series in Houston against the Rockets and scored a combined 13 points in both games. Joining the team so late in the season is weird, but he says he's been welcomed with open arms. Fitting in with the group has been pretty easy. You know, the guys are like, you know, super close. You know, they're young, so 
a cafe like that and you know perfectly they all welcome me really nicely so fitting in, fitting in has been pretty easy for me uh, but being in the atmosphere is it's great you know it's a good feeling to know that I can get an opportunity here and these guys are gonna you know help me develop into a, into a you know a regular NBA player so uh, it's been good so far. Spurs now offer the 21 year old a chance to develop his game as he looks to have a long NBA career. Team plays Denver Nuggets Friday night at 7 o'clock. And that's a look at morning sports. Go Spurs go. Time now 442 and 68 degrees for now. So canned tuna, it's cheap, convenient, and full of protein. However, it can also contain mercury. But food safety scientists say you need to know when it comes to those most popular types of tuna. A Minnesota Vikings receiver making the play of his life, saving a life on a highway in Austin. Up next, a first look at what he was thinking right before he sprang into action to free a person trapped in a burning car. In this morning's GMA First Look, saved by an NFL hero. It was the right place at the right time. Minnesota Vikings receiver K.J. Osborne making the play of his life. Touchdown, Touchdown. K.J. Osborne! Saving a life on a Texas highway. Look off to my right and there's a car that has crashed and it's on fire and it's under a bridge. It's all, yeah, it hit a pillar and the airbags were out. And Osborne was in an Uber when they came upon a fiery wreck under a bridge in Austin. The 25 year old who's played three NFL seasons running out of the car with his driver, finding a man trapped inside his burning car. This car could explode. It's a, it's a man's life. You know, his car is burning. I want to go up and help. And this morning, KJ Osborne is telling his story to GMA. God is real. And, um, you know, I'm just happy, you know, we were able to, to, to save this man's life. And we'll have much more on this heroic rescue coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. A warning now about canned tuna, quick and easy protein lots of families use. However, it's known to contain mercury. Consumer Reports tested some of the most popular brands and 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells us what they found. Canned tuna, it's cheap, convenient, and full of protein and omega-3 fatty acids, but... Tuna, just like other fish, can contain mercury. And if you eat a lot of fish, you can expose yourself to this potentially dangerous heavy metal. High amounts of mercury can lead to problems with fine motor coordination, speech, sleep, and walking. It's also a concern for pregnant people since the fetus's developing brain and nervous system are vulnerable. Because of canned tuna's popularity and potential risk, CR tested five popular brands for mercury. The results? Popular albacore tuna had the highest mercury levels, and light varieties had relatively low mercury on average, though it varied can to can. There were some cans we tested that had high amounts of mercury, and because you cannot tell which can that you purchase has high amounts of mercury, you may be possibly exposing yourself to dangerous levels of this heavy metal. For that reason, Consumer Reports recommends pregnant people avoid tuna. In response, National Fisheries Institute said the mercury levels were well below the limit the FDA allows in canned tuna and that these products are safe to consume. If you're concerned about limiting mercury, if you've eaten no other fish during the week, CR says up to 12 ounces a week of bumblebee chunk light, chicken of the sea light, safe catch wild elite, and starkiss chunk light tunas are the safer choices among the cans they tested. There are other nutritious seafoods that have naturally lower levels of mercury, including oysters, salmon, and sardines. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with TransKai, looking over at I-37 at Loop 410. This shot looks pretty clear, not too bad, and things are moving right now. Any word from the Weather Service this morning about visibility issues anywhere in the Well, just looking at some area? of the, uh, the reporting areas, uh -huh. there's hints of fog here and there. We do, like I said, off the top, we have a little bit of a breeze, which is kind of helping things out. However, if the wind just kind of eases at times, we can get some of that fog to form. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those situations where... We're kind of, you know, on the, under the gun, if you will. So the beautiful sunset yesterday, nice from uh, Dignity Hill. And yeah, little fiesta in the corner there. Boy, it won't be long. What is it, a month, uh, five weeks away or something like that for fiesta it's coming up here? Corner. Yeah, it'll be here before we know it. But yeah, thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. And obviously yesterday afternoon, the, uh, the fog finally cleared on out. And uh, yeah, beautiful view, a whole different story than what it was yesterday. But notice the glow around the light. So there's plenty of humidity out there. We've got a couple of spots with just hints of fog, a little bit around Victoria. So 
just like I said, be on the lookout for it. It is very warm. It is very humid. The normal high temperature this time of year is 72 degrees. So we're closer to that than the normal low. We're almost 20 degrees above normal right now. And there is still plenty of humidity out there. These dew points are mid and upper 60s. So yeah, you definitely notice it when you step outside. Now, as far as the rest of the morning, we have got, and that's just for a little sprinkly shower, drizzle or mist out there this morning. It just because that moisture continues to get pumped on in here. It's not going to be raining anything like that, but just be on the lookout for some of that mist. And then throughout the rest of the morning, it's going to be once again tough to get rid of some of these clouds like yesterday. We'll be in the mid to upper 60, excuse me, mid to upper 70s at noon, and then a little sunshine thrown on in. I don't know about y'all. I didn't see really anything as far as sunshine. I mean, it was just really trying to squeeze on through those clouds. That's going to be the situation later on today. We will hit 85 for high temperatures. So again, we're going to be 10, 15 degrees above normal computer model. Lots of clouds and this one keeps plenty of clouds around today. Again, a few little sunshine trying to squeeze through here and there. Same thing tomorrow. Now tomorrow night and again, this is that model that tends to just kind of paint things in with a broad brush, but we do have the chance for a couple of showers overnight into early Friday morning. Uh, there'll be a few here and there, and it's pretty much going to be a first part of the day situation. Then that's all going to be moving on out of here. We'll still have some clouds hanging around here, and then we are going to have more sunshine in the afternoon Saturday as well as Sunday and then jumping ahead to Monday. There's another front moving on through here. No rain, so this one's going to be coming through on the uh, the dry side. So the only rain chance in the forecast is going to be early on Friday and it's yeah, a couple of showers here and there. 78 degrees today at noon. Most of the cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 85. Very warm, very humid. Again, this morning, just to be on the lookout for a little bit of patchy fog, some mist around the area. Same thing tomorrow. Front moves on through here, and it is looking like it's a really, really shallow layer of air, which is sometimes hard to kind of pick up in computer models, but that's going to knock temperatures down. So we'll be low 70s. That's normal. I mean, it looks mm -hmm. cold on the, the <laughs> craft just compared to everything else, but that's normal. A little bit of rain early Friday. Nice Saturday, really gets warm, downright hot again Sunday, and then another front on Monday. At least it's going to trim temperatures. The only rain chance is really Friday morning, and that's not great. Mm, no, but at least mm. the you know the cooler temperatures will yeah, be a nice break. At least we for get us. a little bit of a break in cooler temperatures. Thank you, Mike. Time right now for 52, 68 degrees. It's the upcoming third season of the Ted Lasso, the final season of the show. Up next, what the man himself, Ted Lasso star and co-creator Jason Sudeikis, is saying about the possibility. About 5 till 5, could this be the last season for Ted Lasso? Plus, an Emmy-winning HBO show is coming to an end. For our latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. On three, one, two, three. I love you guys very much. Is the upcoming third season of Ted Lasso the final season of the show? There have been a lot of confusing stories flying around, so I went straight to the man himself, Ted Lasso star and co-creator Jason Sudeikis. Is it the final season or not? I mean, I it, it, it is as far as I know, yes. Seems pretty definitive, but he says that doesn't mean the show is ending, just that they had a plan for a three-season story they wanted to tell, and they've achieved that. At this point, yeah, the, the, the trilogy, if you will, like the three seasons, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're trying to wrap up those stories as, as the best we can. Season three of Ted Lasso debuts a week from today on Apple TV+. Plus. Hey, Barry. I got you. Meanwhile, the Emmy-winning HBO show Barry is definitely coming to an end. HBO announcing that the upcoming season four, which debuts April 16th, will be the last. Ryan Tyree Henry is a little nervous about the Oscars on Sunday. The Causeway star is a first-time nominee, and he tells me some scenarios keep running around in his mind, making it hard to sleep. Uh, that if I win, that I will trip, one, because I'm a tripper, I will always trip, and then, like, literally getting up there and talking like Yoda. So, like, this day, great me. This is everyone here. Like, I don't, that's the part that I'm like, it's going to be terrible. But we'll see if he trips and or talks like Yoda if he wins Sunday night on ABC. And Dawson's Creek star James Vanderbeek is 46 today, while Station 19's Boris Kodjo is 50. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
Time now for 57 and 68 degrees for now. Fox host Tucker Carlson claims newly released surveillance video of the January 6th Capitol attack shows a completely different side of the story. Just ahead, how lawmakers on both sides of the political aisle are reacting to the new footage. And Mexico is usually a popular place to visit during spring break, but many are worried due to the recent kidnappings. Just ahead, we have suggestions from a local international engagement expert on when and where you should travel during your vacation. We finally spot some flashing lights on Transcad this morning. I-10 Crossroads area. We'll get an update from Stephen Cabasas coming up at the top of the hour. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Shots ring out on San Antonio's east side overnight. Just ahead, what police are saying about three teens that were caught in the gunfire. And new video shown by a Fox News Channel anchor of the attack at the U.S. Capitol is getting both criticism and praise. Just ahead, why House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he has no regrets in releasing the footage. Outside with live cam this morning. Things aren't too bad out there. We're already up near 70 degrees, so no likely, uh, likely, <coughs> excuse me, likely to be a very, very warm day. Darn those allergies. Good morning, yes. everybody. It is Wednesday. It is March 8th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good week so far, and we're expecting some warm temperatures this afternoon again. Very warm, and I assume, Mike, there's still a ton of allergens in the air as well this week. Well, believe it or not, yeah, I mean, all week long we've had, you know, yesterday the, the list was like that long. Now it's about this long, but yeah, yeah it's just going to be sticking around here as things start to uh, bloom a lot more. 69 degrees right now. Bottom number, dew point 64, which means we have 84% humidity. A lot of moisture in the atmosphere. Not as high relative humidity as yesterday. And we've got a little bit more of a breeze. And that's one reason why, as you can see in that graphic there, it's fairly clear out by the airport. We don't have anywhere near as much fog as what we had at this time yesterday. 85, high temperature. Yeah, it is definitely going to be hot and humid today. That number there on the uh, left-hand side of that scale, that's the normal normal high 72 degrees. That's where we're just going to be in the next hour or so a couple of hours. The aquifer dropped down four tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and there's the list of allergens out there. We got four of them showing up in yesterday's count. Oak is moderate, mold, hackberry and a little bit of ash. Of course, the updated allergen count will be coming out a little bit later on this morning, about uh, 7, 7.30 or so. There are hints of fog. As a matter of fact, you can see Victoria has dropped down to just two miles, two and a half miles visibility. LaGrange to Austin five. So there are hints it, it is we've got the ingredients in place for it. But again, that breeze is helping to keep things from getting too awfully thick as far as fog. But the wind is coming in here out of the southeast. And so that's just continuing to pump in all that moisture. We may see a little mist around here. Mid upper 60s all around the area. And again, five, 10 mile per hour winds as the wind slackens off. There may be a hint or two of fog trying to thicken up. So just something to keep in mind. Warm, humid, patchy fog, a little bit of mist here and there. Mostly cloudy, hot, humid today. Tomorrow we're going to do the same thing starting off and throughout most all of the day. Then we have a few showers that are going to start to work in here late, late tomorrow night as the front comes on through here. It is going to be slightly cooler on Wednesday or Wednesday, Friday. We will be back down to normal readings, have some morning showers around here. Then we'll start to warm up somewhat throughout the weekend back in the mid 80s Sunday. But another front comes through on Monday. All those details in the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. Anything? going on. Good morning, Mike. Well, you may want to watch out here along 10 at Crossroads. We have flashing lights, but let's get a wider look at trans guide. This is being reported as a stalled vehicle and what we're looking at are possibly first responders or text dot hero trucks out there, but this does appear that it's off in the shoulder lane, so it's really not causing any issue with traffic, but you can see that we still have folks out there getting the morning started early with us. Now, in terms of delays, we're not seeing that along the westbound lanes of I-10 as you approach Crossroads Boulevard, but uh, if you are heading out toward uh, I-10 or the 410 area in the westbound lanes. Make sure that you watch out, move over or slow down. Giving you a wide look at the map here just at 504. We really don't see a whole lot out there. Lots of green, plenty of construction. Some of that is still lingering around on our roadways. We'll get to that a little bit later on, but let's get to some of those travel times for you. That journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should take you about 24 minutes to the Alamo City 281 southbound heading in from Bernie at uh, Bolverde. Pardon me, 27 minutes along the southbound lanes and about 26 minutes along I-35 south Bound, traveling in from New Braunfels. So we are still in the green and we're going to keep a close eye on this and hopefully we'll have a better update here at 10 at Crossroads coming up in the next few minutes. Guys.
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a 17 year old was shot late last night while walking home from a store with two other teenagers. Happened around 1030 last night in the 2000 block of Burnett Street near North Walters on the east side. Police say the three teens were walking from the store when someone in a dark colored vehicle pulled up and started shooting. One of the teens was hit and taken to a hospital. We have no word on his condition. One of the other teens was shot in the legs and managed to run inside a nearby house. This morning, we now know the name of a man killed in what may have been a shootout on Monday night. San Antonio police are trying to figure out what happened to 27-year-old Frank Rodriguez. The incident happened around 1030 on Monday night on West Cheryl Drive. That's near West Woodlawn and Northwest 36th Street. Police say the man had been shot and was found in the driver's seat. Right now, there is no known motive, no witnesses, and no potential suspects. For a fourth time, State Senator Roland Gutierrez has presented new gun reform legislation alongside some of the families of the Uvalde victims up in Austin. Senate Bill 1737 creates a ban on expanding bullets in House, excuse me, Senate Bill 1736 closes gun show loopholes. Senate Bill 1740 expands gun storage and safety requirements. And then Senate Bill 1739 creates life without parole for school shooters. And finally, Senate Bill 1738 is an automatic suspension of law enforcement involved in the shooting of a child, or as one family member calls it, Uzia's law. I'm so tired of everything being politicized. This isn't a left thing. This isn't a right thing. This is just damn common sense. And since the start of the session, Gutierrez and several of his colleagues have filed 21 pieces of gun reform legislation for the 21 lives taken at Robb Elementary. The deadline to file new pieces of legislation is this Friday. New backlash this morning after Fox News showed new video of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. As ABC's Lindsay Watts reports, while some say it shines new light on what happened that day, other lawmakers are upset. I think it's bull This morning, bipartisan outrage at Fox News host Tucker Carlson after he claimed surveillance video from the January 6th riot proves the attack was mostly peaceful chaos. These were not insurrectionists. They were sightseers. Lawmakers accused Carlson of downplaying the attack, including Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, who held up a letter from the Capitol Police yesterday, criticizing Carlson for cherry picking calmer moments from the riot. It was a mistake, in my view, for Fox News to depict this in a way that's completely at variance with what our chief law enforcement official here at the Capitol, thanks. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who gave Carlson exclusive access to the surveillance video, says he did it for transparency and has no regrets. Each person come up with their own conclusion. Carlson also aired new video of Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who died from a series of strokes after being assaulted. According to Carlson, the video shows Sicknick walking in the Capitol after he was attacked. Apparently in good health after he was supposedly killed. The Sicknick family blasted Fox, saying, Every time the pain of that day seems to have ebbed a bit, organizations like Fox rip our wounds wide open again, and we are frankly sick of it. This all comes as thousands of pages of internal text messages and emails are being released but as part of a defamation lawsuit filed by Dominion Voting Systems against the network. And back to the January 6th video, Carlson pointed out that Capitol Police walked some protesters into the building during the riot, but security experts say that may have been a strategy by by police to calm the crowd. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. 508, 68 degrees. TikTok introduces a new feature called Series, just ahead how you could be charged for viewing these new types of videos. Mexico can be a popular destination for spring breakers. However, recent kidnappings may have many rethinking their plans. Up next, what a local international expert says about going to border towns versus other popular cities in Mexico. Here at home, we're starting off humid at 68 degrees. Looking out there with live cam. Not too bad at this hour, though. We'll be right back. 512 Mexico is usually a popular place to visit this time of year. But after the recent kidnapping of four Americans, some are rethinking their spring break plans. While some people are concerned about their safety, not everyone is thinking twice about their vacation plans to Mexico. In fact, we spoke with an international relations professor at Trinity University who says it's okay to travel as long as you're traveling smart. 
I was planning to go to Mexico over the spring break, um, and I was not going to a, a border town, I would feel pretty fine continuing with my plans. Now, if you do plan on leaving the country, it's a good idea to check the U.S. Department Travel Advisory before booking any trips. Okay, 513, 68 degrees. And meetings just got a little easier up next. How Slack is using a new AI app that will automate a lot of the boring parts of work conferences. Plus, we'll tell you about Amazon's new NFL game on Black Friday that will be free. You will not need a Prime membership. Flores, what would we do without you? Leader of many and pet wrangler too. You report to your boss every afternoon. So beautiful. So becoming a student again might seem impossible. What if a school could be there for all of you? Career, family, finances, and mental health. Well, it can. National University, supporting the whole you. Dry skin is sensitive skin too, and it's natural. Treat it that way. Avino Daily Moisture with Prebiotic Oat is proven to moisturize dry skin all day. You'll love our formula for face too. Avino. Think mom's mad about her favorite shoes? Nope, because Bank of America lets her switch her choice cashback category to online shopping, so she earns more on a replacement pair. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. 516 TikTok is introducing a feature that will allow creators to charge users to view longer videos on the platform. ABC's Lig Liz Nagy has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, longer videos coming to TikTok. The new series feature allows eligible creators to post videos up to 20 minutes long. They can also decide how much to charge viewers to see their work. TikTok plans to allow more creators access in the coming months. Next, chat GPT is coming to the workplace messaging platform Slack. The company announced a new AI-powered app that can summarize meetings and write messages to colleagues in seconds. It takes one click to draft a reply. The Slack chatbot can also help find answers about any topic or project. And the NFL will have a holiday gift for its fans. Next season's Black Friday game, set to be streamed on Amazon Prime, will be free even for non-subscribers. The matchup hasn't been set yet. Amazon says it wants to give everyone a free sample of Prime benefits. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. That makes so much sense because so many folks are already off on that Friday. Yep. I mean, watch one more game and for free? Why not? Good why, news. Why not? Because there's a bunch of college games though on that day too. I don't yes. know. Yeah. Norm I, I, normally. Just, normally. Normally, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. Thursday and I'm just usually thinking about the, the two or three NFL games that are on Thanksgiving Day itself. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. add one for and, a Friday. Yeah. For oh, free. Interesting. Stay glued <laughs> to the couch with the carbs. Why That's not? right. Well, first it was 10 at Crossroads, and now we've got something 10 at UTSA. Yes, yeah. and this one isn't too bad. It's just overnight construction. So let's get a look. Remember, I mentioned that we had some of that lingering around on our roadways. Well, uh, there it is. Unfortunately, uh, crews have not wrapped up just yet. I was speaking to our friends over at Transguide earlier in the morning. So uh, they did make note that we still had crews out in some areas of town that are working to improve the roadways. Uh, looks like we could be seeing the end of this, but watch out because we do have some folks out on the highway working to improve the roadways. But let's get you to the map because obviously this is one area that we'll watch closely, but another one has been right here and that's 10 westbound at Crossroads Boulevard. According to TxDOT, this is still active. So watch out for that stall vehicle out there. It's not causing any issues, but still something to be on the lookout for as you get the commute rolling this morning. Giving you a wide look at the map, it is the same story here, guys. Plenty of green on the screen and lots of construction that will take place. And that will be the same story a little bit later today. We talked about some intersection work along 281, and that will continue all the way up until Friday, March 10th. It begins at 9 in the morning. Should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. We will see various lane closures on the frontage roads right there at Bulverde Road. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of information. And we'll keep a close eye on this, but uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's causing much of an issue on the roadways, but still just something to be on the lookout for, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And I'm kind of jealous of this picture. Great start to spring. Nice job. All the mulch in there around the tree and the flowering something or other right there with the purple blossoms on it. That's very pretty. If uh, Gordon, if you'd like to come to my house, I got a couple of trees that could use that kind of work. So yeah, do you? Okay, Steph also. So 
put you to work this weekend. Anyway, outside, notice how we've got, well, first of all, no fog out there. A little bit of fuzz around the, uh, the street lights because we do have a lot of humidity. The only fog, really anything thick showing up is over there in LaGrange. Victoria, three miles, a hint of it around Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Austin. So just be on the lookout because we've got, obviously, very warm temperatures. We've got a ton of humidity out there with these dew points well up in the mid upper 60s. There is a slight breeze, which is helping to prevent a lot of that fog. But just be, uh, again, on the lookout for it. 10% meaning if uh, there's a little bit of mist here and there. Haven't seen any reports of anything, but just keep that in mind as we continue with these southeasterly breezes pulling in all that moisture. So sometimes it just kind of pumps it on in here and the air can't hold anymore and you get that little bit of fine mist around this morning. Temperatures will stay, well, fairly steady. I mean, we've got such a warm start. We're not going to warm up that much this morning. Plus, we got all the clouds out here this morning, but we will make it into the mid to upper 70s at noon and then some sunshine thrown in. I think like yesterday, it's going to be kind of limited uh, 85 for a high temperature than this afternoon. So we are going to be again 10 15 degrees above normal satellite picture and you can see some of these lower clouds, this little darker shade of gray around here and they're going to be kind of stubborn and then around the country. A lot of rain off to the east of us, snow northeast uh, up there in toward the upper uh, Mississippi Valley, Great Lakes. But also take note how most everything is just about moving straight west to east. We're in this almost a zonal air pattern, which means you don't get much of a change. And that's been the case the past couple of days and is going to be the case into tomorrow. 85, 85. Then we have that front moving on through here. It's just a really, really shallow layer of cold air, but at least it's going to knock our temperatures down. And as it comes through, we'll have a couple of showers around here late tomorrow night, early on Friday. We'll start to warm back up on Saturday. Quick uh, <laughs> spike in temperatures, if you will, on Sunday. But then another front's going to put us back down to normal readings to start off next week. Low temperatures. We're not seeing anything frigid around here. I mean, jacket weather. And then we get into again Monday in the first part of next week. We are going to be slightly on the uh, the cooler side, so we'll be actually down closer to a normal low temperature, yeah, maybe even below that slightly by the uh, first and middle part of next week. 78 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 85. Definitely on the warm side. Definitely humid out there. And the same thing tomorrow. Starting off, a little bit of mist, maybe some fog here and there. Then we'll see limited sunshine front moves through late tomorrow night early Friday a couple of showers scattered about the area most of those would be leaning up toward the north 72 on Friday so yes it will be cooler more pleasant we'll have any little bit of rain early in the day and then that'll come to an end nice looking weekend on the warmer side up to 86 on Sunday and then another front comes through although this front now looks like it's coming through dry on Monday and don't forget such clocks ahead before you go to bed Saturday night. Yeah, good Other, reminder. Otherwise you will be late mm -hmm. for church on Sunday. Yes, and anything else you have planned in addition to that. Right. Yeah, it's like a a stack of cards just keeps falling. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds like the voice of experience here. So. <laughs> well, it's happened. <laughs> 523, 68 degrees. Coming up next, when you can get a new digital version of Avatar, The Way of Water, plus actor Jonathan Majors announces his next project after Creed 3. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three numbers, 977, Fireball 0. Your daily four numbers, 4432, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 18, 24, 30, 32, 34. And your Mega Millions, 15, 22, 25, 28, 69, 21. Excuse me, Mega Ball 21, Mega Flyer 4. And Jackpot's at 203 million. Not bad. Good luck. Avatar The Way of Water is heading to digital this month. CNN's Rick Damagella has that story and more in the Hollywood Minute. I see you. Avatar fans can soon visit Pandora digitally. Variety reports Avatar The Way of Water will be available for digital purchase on March 28th from Apple TV, Movies Anywhere, Prime Video, and Vudu. The release will feature over three hours of bonus content from the film. On the page, you know, you can get an instinct. Casting news, Creed 3 star Jonathan Majors sets his next film. Deadline reports Majors will star in and produce The Understudy for Amazon Studios. The film follows a Broadway understudy who lands a role worth killing for. No release date has been announced. I spent 10 years of my life homeless from the time I was 16 to 25. And, you know, 
I thought I was worthless. You know. Elegance Bratton will be honored at the 2023 Outfest Fusion Film Festival. The writer-director of the inspection is set to receive the Fusion Achievement Award, recognizing individuals making significant contributions to LGBTQ plus visibility in stories, art, and media. The event takes place March 24th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 527, 68 degrees. A bipartisan group of 12 senators has unveiled legislation that could put a nationwide ban on TikTok. Just ahead, why many are concerned with how American's data is being used. And could the Federal Reserve raise interest rates yet again? We'll tell you which lawmakers are fighting back against the potential hike and going after the Fed chairman. And it's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? And here on GMSA, it's just 5 a.m. So are you ready for some new wine courtesy of Snoop Dogg? Why he says it's the best white wine ever just ahead. The clock might be ticking for TikTok. This morning, a possible timeline of when the popular social media could be banned here in the United States. And let's look out there with live cam. 68 degrees, a little humid, but it's going to get even warmer this afternoon. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, March 8th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good week so far. It's been kind of warm for me for March already. Just looking forward to a, a cooler front. Yeah, when temperatures have been averaging 10 to 15 degrees above normal. And then, of course, yesterday we had that humidity that moved on in. And humidity has been sticking around here. We don't have a lot of fog to deal with this morning, though. Good. So that, that's one of the benefits. We've got a little bit of a breeze out there, which is helping things out. But still, I mean, temperatures... Right now, we're, what, 20, 15, 20 degrees above where they should be, just about? Yeah. yeah. We do have a couple of fronts, though, moving on through Yay. here. So <laughs> take a look at uh, the airport view over there with live cam, and notice how no fog, but we've got that little fuzz, that glow around some of the, uh, the street lights here. So, yeah, there is plenty of humidity. Uh, kind of the ingredients are in place. 69 is the temperature. Dew points at 64. Now, there is a little more of a gap between these two numbers than what was the case yesterday. We had like one or two degrees. That was it. But we still obviously have a lot of moisture. And the southeasterly wind just continues to pump all that moisture on in here. As far as fog right now, LaGrange, a lot of thick fog, Victoria, hints of it, Beeville, Gonzales, some around Kerrville, Fredericksburg. So there is a little bit out there where it's just kind of a you know, it wants to be foggy. But again, we've got we have these temperatures uh, that are slightly above what the dew points are and a bit of a breeze. Now, notice how it is becoming becoming calm out there. No wind in parts of the hill country. So as that happens, you might see some of this fog to form up. In other words, just be on the lookout for the next few hours. 78 degrees today at noon, 85 high temperature today. So yeah, 10, 15 degrees above normal should be at 72. We'll already be above that today at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. More of the same tomorrow. Then we have a front moving on through here, and that's at least going to knock temperatures back down to normal readings temporarily and then another one we'll get that all sorted out and take a closer look at the weekend in just a couple of minutes traffic authority any big problem Stephen? Oh. yeah it's some uh, overnight construction mike that was lingering around for a little while but that's already cleared out and things are actually moving along just fine let's get a quick look around trans guy there's 90 at military they expect to see a lot more traffic in the next hour or so through 90 but right now is probably the best time to take advantage of some of the roadways because you do see a few folks out there but thankfully it's not very crowded so uh, again perfect time to take take an opportunity uh, and get the day started maybe a little extra early today. 10 at westbound of Crossroads Boulevard. We did have a stall vehicle that was reported earlier uh, as so far. That was really the main issue and it looks like that may have already cleared out. So better update to report out there. Wide look at the metropolitan area. Still the same story here. Plenty of green. Let's take a look at those travel times and it's the same story here. If you're driving along uh, 37 northbound from Pleasanton should take you about 28 minutes to the Alamo City Highway 90. Uh, if you're heading in the eastbound lanes from Castroville should be about 30 minutes and that arrival from Lytle should take you about 60 minutes uh, to get to the downtown area. But let's get one last look here at Transguide 37 at Hackberry. Again, things are moving along just fine, but we'll have updates on some road closures and places you may want to avoid. That's coming up a little bit later on, guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a late night trip to a store has led to a morning hospital stay for one teenager. San Antonio police say someone shot him as he walked down a neighborhood street. Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters where investigators are working to track down the shooter. And Katrina, is there an update on the teen who was shot? 
Well, we still have not gotten an exact condition from police, but the only thing they were able to share with us is that this teen was shot in both of his legs. The shooter, they say, is someone who was in a car. That car drove up to the teen as he walked with two other people in the 2000 block of Burnett Street on the east side. Now, this was just after 1030 last night. Police say that they were walking home from a store at the time. They still don't know why the shooter took aim at that group. And after he was shot, that 17-year-old boy was able to run home and then get help and was taken to a hospital. Now, police still have just a vague description of the car involved. The only thing they told us is that it was dark in color, and they are still investigating this shooting. Reporting live near Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 535, time may soon be running out for TikTok, at least here in the U.S. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, a dozen Republican and Democratic senators have joined forces with a proposal that could pose a threat to the future of the popular social media platform. TikTok may soon be taken out. What I can tell you is that we have certainly uh, made made uh, clear some of our national security concerns with respect with respect to the TikTok application, which is why it's um, not authorized for use on uh, government devices. A bipartisan group of 12 senators have unveiled legislation Tuesday that boosts President Joe Biden's ability to place a nationwide ban on TikTok. When it comes to platforms and products owned by foreign adversaries like uh, the CCP, uh, there is next to no transparency for users about where their data is being stored and what the information is being used for. The proposed law called Restricting the Emergence of Security Threats that Risk Information and Communications Technology Act doesn't specifically name check TikTok, but it would give the U.S. more powers, like a ban, against foreign software deemed a national security risk by the Commerce Department. I'm really proud to support this legislation and join my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to do something which is necessary, overdue, and critical to get passed as soon as possible. TikTok spokeswoman Brooke Oberwetter issued a statement that says a possible U.S. ban would have a, quote, considerable negative impact on the free speech rights of millions of Americans. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The federal government is telling airports and aircraft operators they need to be more proactive about cybersecurity. The Transportation Security Administration issued new requirements for them to prove they're actively working to deter hackers. This comes after a researcher discovered an old version of a TSA no-fly list of terrorists on a regional airline's unsecured server. It's also part of a broader effort by the Biden administration to improve cybersecurity. And two companies are recalling their eye drop products over concerns they are not sterile. Vera Medica, excuse me, Far Medica USA is recalling two lots of its purely soothing 15% SMM drops because the product may be contaminated. That could cause vision problems and potential injury. And Apotex is recalling six lots of its eye drop solution because of cracks and some bottle caps. That can also lead to contamination. Both companies say customers who have these eye drops should stop using them immediately. Well, it turns out the uh, hunch about yellow was right. Apple is introducing a new iPhone 14 and 14 plus color just in time for spring. Yellow joins the lineup of black, white, red, blue, and purple. Apple's also releasing spring theme watch bands and silicone iPhone cases. Apple has been in the habit of releasing new colors for spring. Last year it was alpine green, not just green, alpine green for the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. You can pre-order the yellow iPhones beginning this Friday. General availability begins on March 14th. Fancy. It's nice to have options. I'm partial to yellow today. Yeah, I think it would go great with your outfit today, your tie. I'll go buy a separate phone just to accessorize. <laughs> I think you should. Time now, 538 and 68 degrees for now. White wine from Snoop Dogg will tell you where you can get the rapper's latest offering for fans. And the Federal Reserve could increase the size of its interest rate hikes and raise borrowing costs to even higher levels. Up next, we're going to tell you why and what that could mean for millions of Americans and their jobs. Outside with Live Cam, we made it to midweek and it's warm out there, folks. 68 degrees. We'll be right back. It's about to get more expensive to borrow cash. That's because the Fed is promising steeper interest rate hikes. And as ABC's Liz Nagy reports, one senator is especially not happy about it. 
do you call Verbal fireworks on Capitol Hill as Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell faced off with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Chair Powell, you are gambling with people's lives. Powell said the central bank is now prepared to raise interest rates higher and more frequently than expected as it tries to get inflation under control even if that means job losses. The process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go <clears throat> and is likely to be bumpy. Warren argues there are other ways to fight inflation, like addressing supply chain issues and cracking down on price gouging. She says under the Fed's plan, millions of Americans will lose jobs. If you could speak directly to the two million hardworking people who have decent jobs today, who you're planning to get fired over the next year, what would you say to them? Inflation is extremely high and it's hurting the working people of this country badly, all of them, not just two million of them, but all of them are suffering under high inflation and we are taking the, the only measures we have to bring inflation down. Senator Warren also argued the Fed's moves could trigger a recession. Since the end of World War II, there have been 12 times in which the unemployment rate has increased by one percentage point within one year. Exactly what you're aiming to do right now. How many times did the economy fail to fall into a recession after doing that out of 12 times? I think the number is zero. That's exactly right. Chairman Powell noted even if the unemployment rate were to rise a full point, it would still be among the lowest unemployment rates in 75 years. Liz Nagy, ABC News, New York. 543, 68 degrees. Rapper Snoop Dogg is now offering his first white wine. We're going to, up next, we'll tell you when you can get it. And welcome back. It's 546 in your morning consumer headlines. A pharmaceutical company that makes a medication to prevent preterm birth is pulling it from pharmacies. The maker of the drug McKenna, which has been on the market for more than a decade, is going to stop selling it after an FDA panel said it is not effective. Now, Covis, the manufacturer, says while it still believes the drug is effective in pregnant women at high risk of premature birth, they will voluntarily pull it off the shelves. The United States planning on a relaxing COVID-19 testing restrictions for travelers from China, a move that could happen as soon as this Friday. It's after a decline in COVID cases, hospitalizations and deaths surrounding the variants that were circulating in China. The Biden administration says it still plans to monitor cases there and around the world, keeping in place a genomic surveillance program that surveys travelers on details around new variants. Snoop Dogg is much more than just a rapper. Nearly three years ago, he teamed up with Australian wine brand 19 Crimes to produce a red wine called Snoop Cali Red. And now he's expanding his line to include his first white wine. It is called Snoop Cali Blanc and is available in stores right now. And this is Snoop's fourth wine he's helped produce. He says he wanted to create a wine with a, quote, sexier, cleaner feel to it. <laughs> And of course, he says there's nothing better than his Cali Blanc. I've seen 19 <laughs> crimes on the shelf. Before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> but I didn't I didn't know about the Snoop one. So it's yeah. Snoop Cali Red mm -hmm. and Snoop Cali, Cali Blanc. Blanc. Mm -hmm. Got it. Fancy. Fancy. 547 <laughs> on your Wednesday. Let's check back with our Steve Cavazos. Will you give it a try? I'm willing to give anything a shot. And I actually it's the perfect time to switch over to white wine as opposed to red wine. I always try to kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, uh, I think I rhymed there, too. Yeah, yeah, it all worked out. <laughs> all right, let's get a look here at traffic. Uh, La Quintera, 10 at La Quintera. We saw some flashing lights out there. There were some crews still lingering around working to improve the roadways. We'll tell you what they were up to in just a moment, but you can see traffic is moving along there without any trouble. So good news for anyone that has to head out in the next few minutes because plenty of green out there. But really, the main headline of the ro on the roadways has been a construction. So we showed you La Quintera and it's already wrapped up, but be prepared because we're going to see more work out there along Loop 1604 in the northwest west side bridge construction. Now that's actually been current and should wrap on Monday, March 13th. So we still have a few more days to go of this nine in the evening to five in the morning is when it should wrap. But we saw crews out there about maybe 15 minutes ago. So just give yourself plenty of time. We will see the eastbound main lane entrance ramp closure right after lock and Terra Parkway. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There is a full list of closures there. But right now I would say 10 at lock and Terra looks to be in better shape. So I'm happy to report that.
Thanks, Stephen. You're Good welcome. There. So I know it hasn't been really cold in the morning, but I'm still sending my little one with a hoodie because it gets cold inside the classroom after, <laughs> after being outside. As, you know, especially when it's there's that much humidity, and then you walk in the air, it's almost like some of the moisture is kind of trapped in your clothes or yeah. whatever, oh, and yeah. it, it cools you down really quickly. <laughs> well, so. that, and it's been warm enough that a lot of businesses, including restaurants, are blasting the AC yeah. already like it's July or August. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you walk in there and it's like, okay, I can, you know, keep my milk out and it's going to stay fresh out here. So uh, we haven't had many blue bonnet pictures yet, but this is a great one. And yeah, a caption contest on this. What is the dog thinking right now? Is this right or are we done yet? Or, or, my or treat? it's a slight nod to the non-blue blue bonnet. Mm, oh, yeah. is, that a, is that a blue bonnet right there? Right there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Off wanna, to the side. Yep. I see it. Okay. Nice There's another one there right below the banner as well. Oh, like, I see they're kind of sprinkled oh. in here or there. Here we go. Yeah. Good eye. See, if we, oh, we could do a, couple, a puzzle. And, and a couple more. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's like, where's Waldo? Where's the non-blue blue bonnet? So, But thank you very much for the, uh, the KSAC Connect picture. That is absolutely a beautiful picture. All right. Jumping ahead. Climate Prediction Center. And this is the not whether it is going to be on the warm side, but the odds of or the chances of being on the warmer side and going in through the 14th through the 18th, the next six to 10 days, we are slightly above a 50-50 chance basically of being on the, the warmer side of things. But what's encouraging is this has us with a little bit leaning toward the wetter side, a little bit better than 50-50 chance of being slightly on the, on the wet side. Same thing going further into the future, the eight to 10 day outlook slightly on the warm side, or at least the chances of that. But then again, slightly better chance of being on the, the wetter side. So it is encouraging, nothing too cold, but I think uh, the best thing is the fact that at least this is indicating or leaning in that direction that we would get uh, something a little wetter as we go in through the middle part of March. All right, we've got some, uh, I can't tell, is that just the reflection or a little bit of uh a little bit of dampness over there at 410. There may be a little mist hanging around here this morning. Fredericksburg is at five miles visibility, seven LaGrange, so that's actually improved quite a bit. Victoria's dropped down. Hints of fog here and there, nowhere near as much as what we had around yesterday. Mid upper 60s, we are closer to the normal high than the normal low. We are going to keep a lot of clouds around this morning and then make it up into the upper 70s at noon. A little bit of sunshine, minimal sunshine, kind of like yesterday, 85 for a high temperature. And throughout the next couple of days, not much is going to be going on, but then notice how late tomorrow we start to see some of these showers and we do have the chance for some rain, primarily northern half of the area, and that's going to be overnight into early Friday morning. And looks like a damp commute right now for Friday. Then most of that's going to be out of here by the afternoon and we will get cooler temperatures coming on in here for Friday and then start to warm back up. But another front after that more on that in just a moment. 78 degrees at noon, mostly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 85 today Again, mostly cloudy, little bit of sunshine here and there. Plenty of humidity tomorrow. We start off just the same mist, maybe a little fog here and there. Front moves through late tomorrow night. And that's going to touch off a couple of showers to start off on Friday. Then that'll clear on out. Good looking day on Saturday. A, I mean, still above normal on Saturday, 77 degrees. Friday is going to be a normal high temperature. Hot Sunday, but cooler Monday, Tuesday. All right, Monday, Tuesday. That's pretty good for people on spring break. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it's not going to be that hot, humid stuff. Very good. Thank you, Mike. 552, 68 degrees. More than 30 years after White Men Can't Jump. Woody Harrelson is back in another basketball comedy. Have a special first look and hear from the actors next. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, two of the four Americans kidnapped in Mexico now waking up on U.S. soil after surviving that horrific attack. The two other Americans from the group that were taken at gunpoint were killed. Why authorities think that this group might have been targeted and what the families of the survivors are saying this morning. Also, some new details about that frightening mid-air scare, what that suspect is accused of doing now and the acting head of the FAA heading to testify on Capitol Hill this morning. So much to get to right here on GMA. Just tried to get them really to play a version of themselves, and they know how to play themselves, so that, that was the main thing. One player with acting experience was Kevin Iannucci. I'm Johnny. I'm your homie with an extra chromie. 
We threw him into a lot of scenes with really good actors in dramatic scenes, and he held his own every single time. Harrelson recommended Farrelly for the job. I don't know how anyone else could have done this movie. Everything he had to accomplish just in terms of the massive workload on a daily basis. That it's going to have cameras rolling, and there's going to be some basketball, and there's going to be some dialogue, and you never know if the shots are going to go in. Sometimes they're not supposed Right now, let's take a look at Trans Guys. See how the Wednesday morning commute is going right now. A few cars at I-10 at La Cantera Parkway. Don't see any major incidents out there or even minor ones. Maybe some leftover overnight construction. We'll talk to Stephen coming up.